Yes, absolutely. And government-to-government -government collaboration is crucial to the delivery of user-centric public services. It's essential. There is a misconception that co-creation might need only involving the users between the individual administration. But if we really want to deliver user-centric services, if we really care about the needs of the users, we need to work together with other public administration because the user does not care which public administration is in charge of delivering the service. The users care about the service and we need the service design approaches that involve the cut across public administration. We need data sharing agreement. We need the adoption of data standards. We need to share data. We need to design our services, not just thinking of the relation between the local, the individual administration and the users, but the whole ecosystem of providers, including private providers, not only other administration, but also private service providers. So a systemic view is essential to this and a systemic practice. So there needs to be collaboration practices in place in terms of deciding common standards, deciding data sharing protocols and implementing them in, in a way that is designed around the needs of the user so that it becomes seamless for the user. And this is where the European policy has focused in recent years, the so-called once-only principle where the users only have to provide, has to provide the data and information to the public administration once, because public administration is in charge of making sure that this information goes to the relevant public administration and does not have to be provided by the users every time. It is very difficult. It requires lots of work and this work is often not appreciated enough. But we have seen now over the last months that when there is a will, there is a way. When government wants to achieve, for instance, to the delivery of online services, when the online services are the only services available and the digital is the only interface, government is able to digitize and government is able to reach and to deliver, for instance, money to the citizens quickly. So what we have learned over the last month is that it's very much a question of political will, even more than of money. Uh, when, if we are able to sustain the political will that we have had during the emergency, because what we have realized is that government to government collaboration and digital delivery is essential to the survival of us. I mean, if you needed help during the pandemic, you had to use digital services and you could not go to 20 different institutions to ask because especially the people who needed it most were not able to deal with this complexity. And this is a matter of life and death, or death. It's not a matter of convenience. Until the pandemic, it was a matter of convenience. We didn't care very much, to be honest. We were talking about user centricity, but ultimately, the worst that could happen is that people would lose time going from one office to another. What happened during the pandemic is that people have died because they were unable to access the proper services. They were, there were real harm done and the government have stepped up and have managed to deliver quickly services that help citizens. Now, what we have to do now is sustain not the spending, not the strategies, but the delivery the commitment, the capacity to deliver and to stick to what was promised. Because too often, digital government so far has seen a huge gap between what was announced and what was delivered. We need a lot of things. Uh, we need uh, money, for sure. We need investment. We need investment in skills. We need to be able to bring, not only to train civil servants, but we need to change our way, the way we recruit and train civil servants. And we prepare the future civil servants. And this, in this sense, the schools have, of public administration are key to achieving these goals. Uh, but uh, as I said before, we need uh, most of all political will. Uh, when you see digital governance happening, some eggs have been broken. You cannot do a, a, an omelette or a tortilla without the eggs. And this means taking decisions and sticking to them. And when you see 
For instance, in Denmark, citizens have to access service digitally unless they have a special reason not to. In Holland, uh, public administration have to use base registries and cannot ask citizens for data. In the UK, the digital services basically created, consolidated 300 government websites into one. Now, whenever this happened, many agencies felt angry because they felt they were taking away their autonomy. In reality, this is not a zero-sum game. It's not a matter of full centralization. It is a matter of deciding on standards. They can be federated standards. You don't need to impose. You need just to agree on and implement the standard and stick to. And this is the issue, compliance, the ability to uh, enforce the decisions. What I see, um, not just in Spain, but in many countries, that one of the problem, one of the causes of uh, the lack of user centricity in government is the lack of competition. So the fact that public services are mono natural monopolies, and obviously there is less incentive to perform better. Um, however, what we see now is that users are doing the comparison. Users are not only using an iPhone, which is great in terms of user interface, as good as it gets. But they are actually seeing great services from uh, banks or from the airplane um, companies, you know, when they purchase an airplane. So they are really getting used to good quality service. And government are noticing these pressures because citizens are doing the comparison and are saying, why can't I get this level of service from my municipalities and, and, and government. And, and this is happening, and I think this is a very powerful incentive, citizens' expectations. What we have learned is that today, it is easy to set up a website and an online services. We can do this, you know, there are these hackathons that in a weekend, you set up a service. But to deliver real added value to citizens, a full service, not just the user's interface, a valuable service to citizens, you need long-term investment. Take one example, the quality of data. Spain has had huge problems with data quality. We, do not even, we cannot even count the deaths. So uh, these issues are long-term. You can deliver excellent services in five days, but you need to have the infrastructure in place, you need to invest, you need a long-term vision before to align your database, to adopt modern standards, to adopt open standards and, and software. And if you have done this over the years, and if you have skilled and motivated workforce, you can do miracles during emergencies. But if you haven't done, you will not fill this gap at the time of the emergency. You need to do this before. But the issue is, it has not been an option for many years, but it has happened too slowly. I think what we need to realize now with the pandemics is that we need to deliver it because if we don't, people will die. And this is an essential service, it needs to be in place. So, you know, we have been using digital services. I've been working on digital for 20 years, and in 2005 there was a declaration saying that user centricity was key. And we still have the same declaration uh, 12 years after. Now, what, why didn't we deliver it before? And I think because we didn't have the political pressure. And if there is one thing we need to take away from this is we need the political pressure. We need Government, we need the Chancellor Merkel to step up at the time of crisis and say, we need to deliver money, support to the citizens now, quickly, whatever it costs. Just as Mario Draghi did with the euro at the time of the crisis. Mm -hmm. Whatever it takes. This is the, the key message that should be under any digital government strategy.
The main change is not the technology used or is not the, the design. The most important change is language. Having titles that mean actually something to people that are outside public administration. And this is the single, by the way, is the cheapest change you can make because you don't need any intervention. You can do it in-house, you don't need external experts to do it. And uh, it, is, it has huge impact and it's also a way to start triggering the thinking of civil servants towards users. So uh, I cannot um, emphasize more how langu plain language is crucial. And by the way, this is not just something for public administration. Plain language is becoming the priority in the legal professions today. So this is not just about uh, public administration. Too, for too long, professions, every profession, has been protecting itself from others and from uh, um, scrutiny, scrutiny by using difficult words and by using kind of jargon. And now, in every profession, you can see this, a wave of uh, um, really a cultural change towards plain language, also because the borders between professions are no longer there. So you really need to be able to speak to everyone when you speak. And this is actually one of the main um, guidelines of, of the Lisbon Council when we deliver is avoid jargon at all costs. So, I think this is not just a public administration change, I think this is an historical change and public administration is in the middle of that. It's really difficult to convince a policymaker to invest on base registries and databases. It's like the most boring thing ever and it is the most important thing that you should do. So, uh, I think this is uh, a result of a long-term commitment and what our politicians in, in, in countries which are less advanced need to do is to ensure the political will and the long-term investment. What we do not need is to change strategy and standards every four to five years. This is a long-term investment. We know how it works, I mean, regardless of the differences the, the big um, strategy, the pillars are clear to everyone in terms of standards, open standards, um, interoperability frameworks, what are the skills needed, the, the design, the interface. I mean, this, this is again not rocket science. The problem is making it happen, is ensuring a long-term commitment to, to delivering. because this is the problem. Too often every administration tries to protect its own turf and to say, you know, I am the main interface for citizens. I will build the single uh, portal, uh, single access point, and everyone tries to do that. In reality, and this is uh, really a natural part of the European institution, a federated approach works. And every administration should realize that they have a supporting role and there is a possibility to create a federation of services where no one is the center, the citizen is the center. There is not one portal that rules them all. There are a set of interoperable services that can be delivered by different organizations using uh, software models. So this federated approach is at the core of the European interoperability framework and has increasingly recognized as the, the best solution for uh, once delivering, once holding a user-centric public services. The most important thing is adopting a data-driven culture throughout public administration. And it's not really necessarily, you don't need machine learning at all times, you don't need predictive analytics at all times, what you do need always is good data. And that is the, the essential ingredient of delivering public services. And in some cases you need big data, and in some cases you need advanced analytics. But if you want to deliver these services, even more when it comes to machine learning, high quality data are 
the essential ingredient. 